Hey guys, it's Russell back, and on today's video, as part of our continuing series on Bring That Mercedes Back From The Dead, we're going to accomplish two things today on this episode. Number one, we're going to extract the power steering fluid, and we're going to change the power steering filter. If you're not familiar with Mercedes, I bet you didn't know it had an actual power steering filter. And also, we're going to be extracting the brake fluid. The... the both of both of these things that I'm telling you that we're going to do, uh, if you go back and search the channel, there are going to there's a brake fluid. Um, if I think the video is just changing your brake brake fluid matter or whatever, you can go back and look at that video and see why I'm doing what I'm doing. Also, uh, the same thing with the power steering fluid. Uh, there is a reason to that, which I'm not going to go into that because I've already done a video on it. But we're going to get the old fluid out, change the filter. And uh, we're a little bit closer to getting the Mercedes back on the road, hopefully soon. So let's go outside and take care of this procedure. It's not hard to do. All right, so on the 123 body Mercedes and 126 body, um, for sure, they have this type of power steering pump. Uh, this is the pump and the reservoir. And there's a wing nut on top. We're going to loosen that. We're going to pull the cap off. When you pull the cap off, inspect the seal. There's a seal right here. It's, a, it's like a rubber gasket. Uh, it doesn't get replaced unless it was damaged. Now you can see we're full of power steering fluid. So I'm going to take my extractor and just empty it out like this. This is a procedure that really should be done um, yearly, for sure. There's a reason that the Mercedes engineers made these cars last so long for stuff like this. I mean, who puts a, who puts a filter in a power steering pump? Okay, so we've got that out of the reservoir. Now, if you really want to take this to the extreme, you could loosen the lines down at the steering box and empty the rest, but there's not that much fluid in there. The bulk of the fluid is in here. All right, I wanna show you guys something real quick that I failed to mention. There are two types of retainers inside here that hold the spring down. This is the worst one. This is almost like a, a pot metal, um, just a grooved piece of sheet metal that you just push down, you can unscrew it, but if yours, if you open yours up and it's got a, a plastic collar, almost like a translucent or manila colored plastic collar and a nut, that's what most of them have. Um, this one is horrible because you have to hold the spring down and there's a lot of pressure here and get some pliers and try to unscrew this. You know, this is not a nut. It's I don't know what you call these there. It's just a, it's a quasi nut. And then just let the spring go like that. Okay. Now, inside here, we've got our power steering filter. And there it is, just like that. I'm gonna let that drip just a little bit. Now there's quite a bit of fluid underneath the filter itself, so I'm going to extract again. You know, rarely do these go out. I've seen these in, they've been sitting in junkyards for years and they still they're still good. So 
I just try to get every bit of fluid out of there that I can. I'll give you a shot of that inside there. Okay, so that's what it looks like inside there. And I'm just gonna take our new power steering filter, set it in there, and then we're gonna fill it up with uh, power steering fluid. Check your manual, because some of these, you can use power steering fluid or ATF. And here's our brand spanking new filter. Make sure that the serrated edge, this part, faces up. Okay, make sure it goes all the way down. It actually fits in a recess there. And then we'll put the spring on. And then the way this works is you basically just kind of press that down like that. And I just do a test fit of the cap. You want it enough so it's got, it's got pressure against the cap like that. And that's perfect. And that's not going anywhere. All right, so I'm going to get some power steering fluid. It's nothing special. If you'll go back and watch my other video on why to even do this, um, because you should be extracting this out once a year anyway. And you see the color power steering fluid is, it's kind of like brake fluid, it's nearly clear. The filter uh, really should be changed. I mean, they're really cheap to do, but I, I like to do this once a year. And there is a, uh, there's a mark inside there, which is about maybe a half inch from the top. And you can see that it's, uh, you can see the filter all the way down, whereas before you couldn't. Now I don't, I think ATF fluid may have been in there because it was a little darker. But um, just put the cap back on, put the wing nut back on, and that is done. Now again, if you want to go to the trouble of taking the hoses off, you can do that. Uh, I don't usually do that because it's easier to do this and I do it so frequently that the fluid is constantly being changed out. So let me show you what the filter looks like. Um, it looks like a very tiny oil filter. Same general construction. But it's enough to uh, obviously do something for the system. And that's one reason probably why they last so long. All right, so the next thing on our list is we're going to extract the brake fluid out of the reservoir. Now, I do this once a year in all my cars. And I'm telling you that the best thing to do is to extract the fluid out of the reservoir and then go bleed all the brakes. If, mo if you look in most owner's manuals, it tells you to do that every, I don't know, three years. I do my brake fluid in all my cars every year. Now, I'm not going to be bleeding the brakes right now. That's a whole, it's going to be a whole nother big video. Um, but if, if nothing else, most people don't do anything. They just leave the brake fluid in there. It's not permanent. Um, and you know, the, if you do nothing more, then at least do what I'm getting ready to show you to do, remove the fluid out of here, then you'll be way ahead of where most people are. Again, it's not the ideal scenario, but I'm gonna make sure there's no power steering fluid. And then, and you see that this fluid is still, is still nice and almost uh, clear. 
it's not black like you see most other uh, if you look at most people's brake fluid reservoirs it's almost black all right so it turns out that me messing with this cap right here ended up breaking it um, so that means that I get to do a how to replace the reservoir on your Mercedes another video um, so <laughs> we'll end up having to bleed the brakes anyway in another video but that's that's the basic maintenance again I do this I do this once a year on all the cars at a minimum uh, normally I will go and bleed all four brakes but we're not going to have time to do that on this video but now we're going to be forced to do that on this video which is just fine um so anyway hopefully that helps you guys if you have a mercedes diesel or even if you don't all cars have braking systems all cars use brake fluid and i highly encourage you to go watch my video that i did on should you change your brake fluid and also your power steering fluid both of these really really cheap i probably didn't use a dollar's worth of fluid between the both of them um, but it helps to keep the seals conditioned and it's always got new fluid etc etc and um, that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna leave that so guys i appreciate your viewership i'm sorry for the guy next door running his blower and his mower the entire time i've been doing this video if it's not a blower it seems like it's a uh, dog barking but uh Thank you for sticking with me, and thank you for this series. I think it's going to be a really good one. I'm having fun doing it, and I will see you on the next video.